The idea behind these conferences is that we learn about group dynamics by experiencing them as they happen in real time rather than by hearing somebody talk about them. Group relations gives you, gives you a new language set to, to make sense of the world around and to make sense of what happens in groups. When I work with students, what I really want to get, with them, get, get to them about is that leadership is about being adaptable, it's about working with a lot of other people, it's about being able to deal with bumps in the road, and overall it has a lot to do with just being able to understand yourself and understand other people. And that is exactly what the Group Relations Conference focuses on. One of the things I found fascinating about, uh, about the conference is that within a three-day period, they're able to build a, uh, a corporate culture with all the bureaucracy built into it and all the, the mistrust that tends to develop and you know, break down in communications and, and they do it within a, within a very tight, constrained three-day time frame. And it's, it's just fascinating to see how that, that happens. The first step, I think, um, for an individual to take in a conference is to really become aware of what is your role. Are you usually mothering? Are you usually someone that likes to direct people? Or, uh, what is your role that you tend to take? And once you discover that and become more conscious of it, you can decide if that's something you would like to stick with, that you, uh, you like that role, you find it useful, you find um, it's a good fit for you, or is it something you want to you take off and try on something else? I've attended two conferences and the first conference, I actually was somewhat put into a role of the token black girl, being a woman of color, uh, and being the person that, you know, somehow took on this subconscious representation of the other women of color in the room without even realizing it. Since being involved in the group relations conference, um, I have found myself really contemplating this idea of the roles that I take up personally and professionally. Um, for me, one of the, one of the direct results is um, not taking up the role of kind of the tall white male that speaks and facilitates. I've had experiences, you know, even personal experiences where I've been able to look and see how people are actually trapped in their role of leader as an authority figure and, and are immobilized because they can't reach out of that position and ask for help and ask for directions and really get a good bead on what the real problem and change is. And once they do, then these solutions start rising up from the people that are around them. So I found it very valuable in change, especially in complex areas where you can, there's no way one person has the silver bullet. Learning to be present is very difficult for especially um, Americans in this day and age. A lot, of, you know, the Western world, uh, we're so distracted from being present. We're um, so busy. We're, you know, so superficial that um, it really is a difficult task and it takes a lot of work and a lot of practice to learn how to do the work of being present. Uh, the here and now is important in business because even though we're planning for the future and using data based on what has happened in the past, the decisions are being made right here, right now. Uh, decisions get made in meetings, they get made on the production floor, on the sales floor, wherever it might be that the particular decision is being made, it's being made in a particular moment, in a particular place and the factors that influence that decision aren't necessarily the data themselves. Data is limited. We can't know what's going to happen in the future. We can only make a guess. And so it becomes a matter of who has influence and um, how do they have that influence and why? And is it based on gender or race or is it based on experience? And either way, is it something that's going to help us actually make a decision that will be beneficial for the organization and the, the members of the organization in the future. I think leadership comes from within. I think leadership is something we all do every day. It's, it's how your interactions with others, it's your ability to support 
other people's visions as well as create a vision that other people can follow, uh, to be able to guide others to a common goal, to not be afraid to show those feelings, not be afraid to share those emotions or humble yourself around strangers, to live your life through every experience that you have, um, whether it's making you angry, whether it's making you sad, whether it's making you love. All of those are encompassing in a leader and that's what, re what we really need more of is people that can get through those experiences, learn from them and share them with others. I definitely feel that I have a greater freedom to respond differently to situations now that I've done group relations work than I did before I ever started the work. I think before this group relations conference I would, like many people, just get caught up in either the argument of the moment or the strategy of the moment and we drift so far from purpose in so much of our life and work. Now speaking less, listening more, being more strategic, I actually find my a new role that I am taking up more often in my organization is the clarification of purpose. The work I, I did at the conference, I think out of everything I did in grad school has stayed with me the most. I went into the first group relations con uh, conference uh, with some healthy skepticism, I think, about what um, I may get out of it. Um, and it certainly um, exceeded all my expectations. It was um, transformative and exhausting and a really intense great learning experience and I even said then even coming home at that moment said you know I think I want to do that again